Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that cough. It was a little mistake right there. It's your boy Ariel right, Knuckles here to give you an Eagles update. Now, I haven't done an Eagles update in a very, very long time. If you know me, I was doing my radio show at the Bronx at Rider University. But now that I'm graduating now, now I'm going to be doing, you know, recordings at home. And then I'll also be doing articles on my own time. So it's not on the set schedule now. So I'm going to be doing this like anytime I want, so as long as work doesn't get in the way of it. But you will see me, you know, giving updates after every game because I have off on Sunday, so that's a relation. I can't, I cannot work on Sunday because so that's football season. So you know, what time it is. But anyway, let's get let's get right to it now. As you know, the biggest news, well, big news from Eagles and Cowboys. We start with the Cowboys first. Well, yeah, we'll talk the Cowboys first because like this is like NFC talk pretty much. Um, Ezekiel Elliott, the running back for the Dallas Cowboys, has been suspended six games for the domestic violence issue that was going on last year. Now, I do think six games is a pretty big deal. There's so many things going on around this because, first off, they say they found no evidence that Zeke did it. They found, they said, well, I mean, there's pictures, but... Uh, they think they said the pictures were false or whatever. I don't know. But regardless, so they said they found no evidence. So why was the investigation still going? He, but here's what made it worse to me was that the fact that Zeke had that all the Zeke had that thing with the pulling down the girl sh pulling down the girl's shirt at the St. Patrick's Day thing, which was not a good move by him because he's on an investigation, which I think was was a bull crap investigation. He can't be doing stuff like that because it only makes the matters worse. Like, you can't be doing stuff like that. <laughs> then with the altercation at the bar, but apparently he didn't do it, which was good. But it just keeps on, you know, issue after issue after issue. And I feel as though maybe that's why they lean towards the, um, they lean towards the suspension. But I don't like it because, like I said, there's no evidence in that. So why... Why would you why would you do that? Like why would you do why would you still suspend them? Like it makes the NFL looking bad too. Now grant, I know they had a history, you know, with domestic violence of like with the Ray Rice. They're gonna spend them for two games, but after they showed the video, they're like, Oh no, um we're gonna suspend them for like the whole season now. Then with Josh Brown, who admits that he beat on his wife multiple times, he was only suspended for one game. Whereas it's in your Elliot, no evidence, suspended for six games. Now it's gonna appeal to this, and I want him to because I honestly don't. I honestly think that it's not right. Now they were, hurt, you know, owners, other owners pressuring the Cowboys to do something. Now, granted, I do feel as though Cowboys players don't get like the punishment that other players get because I feel so with the Cowboys, they let them off the hook sometimes. But in this situation, though, no, it's ridiculous. It, he shouldn't have been suspended. Now, and I'm glad that he's appealing right now. So I can only hope, only hope for him for his success. Now, this could it is going to be rough for the Cowboys, but I don't want to make uh, I don't want to make you know predictions just yet because he is going to try to appeal this. So he could win this appeal and maybe get suspended for like. No games or maybe two games, but we'll, we'll see. Like as September comes along, by the beginning of September, I'm gonna start doing my uh, <coughs> division division um predictions. Now to the Eagles. You know, the big news was that um, Jordan Matthews. We traded Jordan Matthews and a third round pick for Buffalo Bills cornerback Ronald Darby, and I was pretty shocked by this. I mean. There was numerous reports saying that, you know, Nelson was going to start over Jordan Matthews. Now, here was my thing. My issue about it was that I'm 50-50 I'm on this. Mainly, well, I'm 50-50 on this deal. We do get a quarterback while talking to Ronald. Before I, look, look, let's talk about him right now. I don't know too much on Ronald Darby. Like, I heard he's a pretty good player. Now, it does help our quarterback situation. He's going to be the starter, like, no doubt about that. Like... No ifs and buts about that, cause I I don't see him, cause I don't see him not getting a starting position. And now our quarterback our quarterbacks are young now. When we really think about it, cause you have 
Russell Douglas, Cindy Jones, Jalen Mills, and now Ronnie Douglas. Now, Ronnie's going to be like, you know, the veteran in this. So, I mean, it can work. It can possibly work out. And plus, you have safeties and, excuse me, safeties and Ronald and uh, Malcolm Jenkins. So, that will be interesting to see. And now, we want to see Patrick Robinson get burnt all the time. So, that that's good for the cornerbacks. Now, when it comes to the, you know, the other receivers... Well, Nelson Aguilar, like I said, people are saying he's been doing good at camp and whatnot. And we've seen this before. We're like, we got to pump the brakes. Like, yeah, I get, like, here's what I say. Okay, here's what I'll say about Nelson Aguilar. He does have the talent. Like, <coughs> I, saw that, I see him getting separations from corners. He's got the speed. But when it comes down to catching the ball, he's just not doing it. Like, we saw in the preseason game, like, went through a bad pass, yeah, but that was still catchable for Nelson Aguilar, and he dropped it once again. So, like, last night didn't really, sh- didn't, like, show me anything that's like, oh, yeah, let's keep N- Nelson Aguilar on the team. And Mac, and I also think, you know, they really like what they saw from Matt Collins from that pass from Wentz, you know. The Packers blitz a lot in that game, but once, you know, when he gets blitz, he still, you know, is able to find that receiver. And Matt Collins with a nice stiff arm there. He can be a very big weapon. I forgot how tall he is, but he's a t- he is a tall dude. So you got him and Alshon Jeffrey, <laughs> very tall, big receiver. So that can really help out these guys. And now, now it's, I, I maybe, I think maybe Matt Collins, I, here's the thing. People were saying that Matt Collins is going to be a starting slot. Receiver, I don't see that happening because I just don't know if he's quite ready yet. But I do believe that him and Nelson are going to compete. So we'll see what goes on with that. But I mean, I kind of wanted to have Jordan Matthews because, you know, to have the more receivers, the better. Because, you know, I feel as though we should keep them to, to compete against the NFC East. Now it's like, okay, suppose if, uh, suppose if. Ronald Darby does bad. Honestly, here's the thing. <laughs> if Ronald Darby does okay, that's fine. I think I'm more on the I'm more on the Nelson. I feel some the Matt Collins will play. He'll, he'll make some rookie mistakes, but it really comes down to Nelson Aguilar because the pressure is on this guy. We're basically saying, hey, we're keeping you over with Jordan Magic. We believe that you have the better overall talent. Now I will say this. Jordan Magic is a good player. He is a workhorse. Like Jordan Matthews, to me, does good when he's not the number one target. Like, I still feel as though his best season was his rookie season because we had Macklin out there. Technically, he was, yeah, he was the number two receiver because Riley Cooper stunk, stunk. Like, he, he was terrible. But that was his best season. Now, granted, in 2015, he had a major hump because with the whole... We saw it in the Atlanta Falcons game, like, after that missed catch. That's when the whole... Jordan Matthews fiasco started, but he got his confidence back up in the in the um, Dallas Cowboys game when we beat him in overtime. His confidence got up. Now, <coughs> now he was and he was still considered you know to be the number one receiver right there. And then we get into this season, it, I mean, last season, 2016 season, DGB did a little bit of the part, so that brings up Jordan Matthews being the number one receiver again, and as an Aguilar. Didn't have enough. Didn't have a good season again. So, he, but despite and like plus Jordan Rice had an injury, and now despite all of that, though he was a good workhorse. So he definitely you know showed the effort in that. So you know, now talent wise, like and now that Aguilar get his confidence up, like be a, and catch the ball, he could be a yeah he can be a better receiver than Matthews. But from what I've seen these past couple of years, it's like. I'm, I don't have the full confidence in Nelson Aguilar right now. And now, if he, and he thought the pressure was on, it's really on now for this kid. So he has to he has to perform well this year. There's no ifs and buts about it. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of suck not seeing the, uh, not seeing the, um, the chemistry between Jordan Matthews and Carson Wentz with that touchdown dance. Like, they were really getting to know each other. And you, I, you saw a post from um, Carson Wentz saying that he's gonna he's gonna miss him. Like, honestly, man, I don't think this was talked about. But I mean, the NFL it's a business. We all know that. But this could I mean, could this really affect Carson Wentz? Maybe a tiny bit. But it's like you know, it's not the fact that 
Gary Manson was a good player to me. I thought he was a good player, but just having that chemistry, like, Carson called this guy a friend. So, you know, now he has a bit of another, another chemistry, and I feel as though that's been the issue with the Eagles quarterbacks and their receivers. Like, Carson was starting to, was, was finally starting to develop a chemistry between Ertz. So, I would say that this coming season, I, I, will feel, I feel as though we'll see a very good Zach Ertz because every time Zach Ertz was there, he had to, he had to you know, make a relationship with another, with, with another QB, another QB, another QB. So now, you know, he's had that season long with Wentz, uh, one season with Wentz, so I feel as though the chemistry will get better eventually, will get better this season. And now Nelson, you know, I feel as though Carson needs to coach Nelson a lot. He, he's going to have to uh, coach this guy a lot. So hopefully we'll see something from Nelson. Like, I'm cheering for the guy, by all means, prove me wrong. But overall, I mean, I'm 50-50 on this deal. I'm not, now, I did post this on Facebook. A lot of people, you know, are 50-50 too. I feel as though <laughs> if you're a Cowboys fan, you're probably laughing at this. If you're a Redskins fan, you're probably laughing at this. If you're a Giants fan, you're probably laughing at this. Like I said, I'm 50-50 on this deal. We're basically, like I said, in the end, we're basically saying that Nelson, hey man, you gotta, you gotta step up. I mean, Mac. I mean, maybe Mac can give us early, you know, early impressions because I feel as though he can do that. I feel as though he can really do that. So I'm very happy to see him. But with Nelson, you know, it's you know, what can you, what can you like? Say, here's the thing. I don't want to. Dang, it's kind of hard to say. Like I'm saying, like. I say, okay, I don't want to give up on the kid because, you know, football, it is a tough game. But, you know, I got to cheer for this guy. I, can, I, I mean, am I, am I a big fan of the move? Eh, kind of. Not, eh, I don't know. Not really. But like I said, I'm 50-50 on it. But Nelson, man, like, you, you have to step up, bro. Like, you really have to. Like, I don't like see. And I've had and I have my issues with Nelson Aguilar. Like the biggest reason was you know, the biggest meltdown for me with him was that Seattle game. That was when things just started going downhill from there. So, you know, I can now grant I can see people's frustration with him, and they they have every right to be. But for me, I, I guess I'm I'm, gonna, I'm leaning towards the side when I'm where, where I'm like, okay, guys, we have to <laughs> put our faith in this guy. As much as you don't want to. I feel as though, like, he needs people to believe in him. But, like I said, it's mental for him. So, he's got to get that out of the picture. I mean, hey, man, your third year is you make it a bricky year. Like, you have to do well your third your third season. Like, this is it right now, man. If Nelson does not do good after this season, he can possibly just be, like, you know, one of the worst receivers. One of the worst, one of the worst players the Eagles have ever drafted. And he would hate to have that on his resume. He really would. But also another bonus with this trade, with this trade is that now you don't have to pay Jerry Matthews more money, more money, because this was, this was going to be his last year in Philadelphia for his rookie deal. So you can possibly, you know, keep Alshon, keep Jerrigan, <laughs> and Darby is still on his rookie deal. So maybe we can de- develop something and. Like I said, I like how the corners are young. Now, granted, the young players have their ups and downs, but it's always good to start them young. But he is Darby's all making be our best cornerback right now. I mean, you can't you can't be worse than Patrick Robinson. It's gonna I think it's gonna be him and Patrick Robinson starting, and we'll see and we'll see you know Jalen Mills or Russell Douglas in the. Uh, on the field every time and then every now and then. But like I said, they're all young. Quarterback is a tough position to get used to, especially playing in the, in the NFL. Like, it's rough. Like, it's, it's definitely – like, I, for me, it's a quarterback is obviously the first thing. I don't even think that quarterback is the second – it's like the second toughest position, position to play in the football, especially when you're a, a new player coming into the league. So that is going to be tough, but – Anyway, so that's my take on this. I mean, we'll see what happens in the, we'll see what happens this season because, like I said, if Nelson and if Matt Collins, okay, Matt, Matt Collins is a rookie, but I'm ho- I'm hoping we don't see a bad season from him. But if Nelson does bad, then 
Oh, man, then that then that trade was for nothing then because he is like the prime target in this trade. Like they're really trying to saying that hey, we believe in this kid. <laughs> is it? Is it? I mean, I could be wrong about that. I mean, I guess they just didn't see Jordan Matthews being here long term. I guess they see maybe they see something from Matt Collins too that we're not seeing. So it's so many ifs like it's so many question marks throughout this whole entire trade but like i said in the end i'm 50 50 on this <coughs> i could be wrong like, i'll bet towards the end of the season what i think about this trade overall but let me know what you guys think in this in the in the comments below you guys already see all my stats on facebook for everybody that's friends with me on facebook but i need to start you know getting this channel up and running so and what a better way to start start now i wish i can I actually need to start probably possibly putting my SoundCloud audios to my YouTube account, but then again, they're kind of old. I mean, they're, they're last season type of stuff, so it's like, eh, should I? But anyways, like I said, let me know what you guys think about this trade. Like I said, I'm 50-50 on this. Eagles fans, I want your opinion on this because it's this is big news today, man. Like Eagles and the Cowboys are like the were the biggest talk of the, uh, of the uh, NFL today. I mean, at least someone got suspended on our team, but... It's still big news from both from both Eagles and Cowboys. I mean, this can drastically, you know, change the outcome of this of this, of this division. It really can, because you see Elliott being suspended for six games. I mean, yeah, they have a great offensive line, but their running backs are not Ezekiel Elliott. So now it does it is going to um, put Dak Dak Prescott on the table to, to show you, hey, you know, hey guys, I'm the real deal. Now I'll say this: there have been games where you know. The first game of the season, Ezekiel Elliott had a bad game, but Dak still kept the, Dak still kept these guys in the game. And another argument you can argue is that against the Vikings, Zeke had a bad game against that, but Dak still won the game. Now, granted, Vikings didn't have a really good offense, so you can kind of like debate on that. But you have seen, you know, you have seen Dak still keep the. Still keep the Cowboys alive, even even with even with you know, Ezekiel's performance. But in that game against the uh, the Packers, the, the wild card game, you saw how in the first half Jason Garrett didn't run the ball. He wanted Zach Prescott to throw it. Then in the second half, he starts he have, he gives Ezekiel El Elliott the ball, and then you know they start catching up. So you know there's goods there. I mean, excuse me. I mean, overall, I mean, for the Cowboys, it's a big blow. And now, you know, their schedule is tough for me. And they start off, they start with three tough games. They start off the game against the Giants, which I feel so the defense is going to improve. And without having Zeke there, that's going to be rough for them. It really is. Then you have to go to the Broncos. Now, granted, the Broncos, they were very bad at stopping the run. So they do, they do have a chance. But we'll have to see what kind of Denver, Denver defense we're going to see because, you never know. Teams can change throughout the season. And the Cardinals, they got some good players on the defense in the draft. So I don't know, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough like those those three games are gonna be tough right there. But like I said, I'm already I'm already you know getting ahead of myself. Like you don't know how how long is he, he's gonna be suspended for because he's gonna appeal this. And I hope he really wins this because I feel that like it's a bunch of bull crap how he got suspended. I mean. We, for me, I love seeing the Cowboys suffer as an Eagles fan, but not like this. Especially when you have when you have no evidence on the kid, like it, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, anyways, this video is mainly on the Jordan Matthews trade, but also chip, also you know chipping on the uh, on the um, seek suspensions too. So, what would you guys think about this uh, audio recording? I mean, yeah, I'm just recording. I'm not showing my face right now, but y'all see me who I, who I am. I just got to get better video equipment because, because I don't feel, uh, I don't know. Maybe I just like recording more than I like showing my face. Who knows? But like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And everyone, have a great weekend. Be safe. Don't think anything stupid. And it's your boy, Ariel Knuckles. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.